two things today. I'm going to try and learn something about what the scale factor in a scale diagram is all about. And also then using the scale factor to determine lengths of missing sides on either a scale diagram or the actual drawing. It says your figures that have the same shape but different sizes are found throughout everyday life. And I hope you've seen some of these things before, like maps or blueprints or models of atoms in science or model trains or even pictures that are enlarged or reduced. And when you compare the drawing of an atom in your science textbook to the actual atom, of course the drawing is much larger than the thing in real life. And so if it's like that, we call this an enlargement. And if you were to compare a model train to the real train, well, the model is so much smaller. So we call this a reduction. And how do we determine how large or how small the model is to the real object? Well, we use something called the scale factor. And to calculate the scale factor, it is a ratio of two measurements. And you must measure the corresponding lengths. So the scale factor is this, it's the length of the object in your model or your diagram or diagram and you're comparing that and dividing it by the length of the object in real life. So the actual length. Notice this is a ratio, so it's a comparison or a fraction. If the scale factor here is larger than 1, that means the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Then that means the length of the object in the model is larger, and this, of course, represents an enlargement. Whereas if the actual scale factor is smaller than 1, then yes, we have the reduction. What happens if it's equal to 1? Well, it's just the exact same size. That's all. And by the way, scale factors can be represented many ways. I've shared it with you as a fraction in that box above. But we can also change fraction into ratios. Or we can change them into decimals as well. So I think you learned how to do that in grade 8. So, let's take a look at example number one, and just look at these pictures. We're going to have a start and end, and tell me whether the transformation is an enlargement, reduction, or neither. So, the first object is always the original, and then the second one is what we did to it. So, this one, it went smaller, so we call that a uh -huh, reduction. This one went from small to big. Yep, this is an enlargement. And finally, that one went, oh, I guess it's the same size. So, neither. Okay. In this case, the scale factor would have been less than 1. The scale factor here would have been greater than 1. And the scale factor here would be equal to 1. All right, let's take a look. Next page, please. Ah, ah, look at this. The original versus the image. The original is like my real life thing, okay? So in this case, I'm asking you to determine the scale factor for each of the following. This one, I've got this big honking fish. Notice I have no numbers. So I'd like you to actually grab your ruler and actually start to measure these lengths. So go ahead and grab your ruler, and I'll do the same, and I'll measure, and you measure, and let's see what we get in the end, okay? So I measure from here to here. And I got my answer of 8 centimeters. And I'm going to measure from here to here. And I got here 3.7. Were you similar close by? Yeah? Okay, so how do we actually calculate the scale factor? So remember from our last page, the scale factor is defined as a ratio. It's the length of the actual object or the model or in this case the image, divided by the one in real life, or the original. So in this case, I'll take my 8 on the top, and I'll divide that by 3.7. And let's get our calculator, because I can't do that in my head. What's 8 divided by 3? Mm, 
0.87. That's about 2.162. So yeah, our scale factor is a little bit more than double. So 2.162. Definitely, this is greater than 1, so our image is an enlarged. Okay, how about the next one here, part B. The actual length of a needle is 6 centimeters, and the length of the needle on a scale diagram is 9. What's the scale factor? So once again, the scale factor is a ratio. So what number goes on top and what number goes on the bottom? Well, it's the length of the object in the model or the diagram that goes on top. That'd be 9. And then the actual length of the real-life number is on the bottom. So in this case, 9 over 6, that's 1.5. This is one and a half times as big. It must be an enlargement again. Okay, how about this next one? Part C, a local farm equipment dealership has model tractors. And the length of the actual tractor is 5.6 meters. Huh. What's the scale factor that was used for this reduction? Now notice I see here centimeters and I see here meters. That's a problem. We should always compare things with the same units. So do you remember how we did those unit conversions? Mm -hmm. One meter is equivalent to how many centimeters? That's right, 100. So 5.6 meters would be just multiplying by 5.6. 100 times 5.6 must be 560 centimeters. And now, I'd like you to go ahead and calculate the scale factor. Once again, it's a ratio of two numbers. The model is on top, that'd be the 8. And the actual is on the bottom, that's 560. This time, I think we can reduce this, divide both by 8, that's 1 over 70. Or if you like decimals, I will bring out my calculator again. What's 1 divided by 70? Whoa, that's small. Hmm, 0 0.014285, that's pretty small, and that's why this is definitely a reduction. Okay, how about example 3? Using this scale factor, why don't you reduce the figure below? So notice that this is a letter E, and it has like 3 squares, this is by, what, 5 squares? So if I were to reduce this by a factor of 0.5, what does the length become? Yeah, you can just take 3 and multiply it by 0.5, and that becomes 1.5 units. So if I started to draw, I guess I'd have 1 and 1.5 units. If I did the actual uh, height and multiply that by 0.5, that's 2.5, so 2 units and a half. And I guess that's as large as my E will be. This here is 1 unit, so 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. It only goes halfway. Same thing up here. And I guess I'm going to now draw like this. And here is my reduction of a factor of 0.5. Notice every single length gets reduced by half. So now this is 1.5 long and this is 2.5 long. Why don't I just color it in to make it look nice too. E. E for excellent or extravaganza or let go my ego. E-G-G-O. Ego. Mm, I like egos. Okay. Turn the page. Now, there are two things I want to teach you today. The first one was determining the scale factor, and the second one is now finding the length of missing sides. And if we are given a scale, we can use a proportion to determine the value of either the model size or the real size. And I hope you remember doing this from grade 8. A proportion is really a statement of two equivalent fractions. So I've given you a statement of two equivalent fractions. 2 sevenths is equal to 6 over 21. Since both the numerator and denominators in the first fraction were multiplied by the same value to get the second fraction. And that value would have been 3. Yeah. So you must be able to solve proportion problems. And you can do this by figuring what value gets multiplied. Or you can imply something called cross multiplication. I'll show you both. You should have learned this before. And you decide which one you're comfortable with. If you're thinking, okay, what value goes from 5 to 20? You can say 5 times what? Oh, yes, 5 times 4 gives you 20. 
Do the same thing to the top and you'll get the missing number of the box. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, if you think that was great, that's great. If you don't, here's another way that people do it. They call it cross multiplication. And I'll use this variable x to represent the missing number of the box. Cross multiplication tells you to do this. Take the two numbers that are diagonally opposite of each other and multiply them. 2 times 20. And do the same thing with the other two. 5 times x. So that's 5x. 2 times 20, of course, is 40. So 40 equals to 5x, and then there's a little bit of algebra involved here. You're going to have to now solve for x. If 40 equals to 5 times x, the algebra is the opposite operation. The opposite of multiplying by 5 is divide by 5. So x equal to 8. Done. So it's up to you which one you want to do for part b. I'll let you try whichever you wish. Go ahead and try that yourself. I got 350. Does that sound good? All right. If you did cross multiply, you should have done the same thing there and got the same answer. Part C. Now, here's a problem. 3 times what gives you 8? Well, this is not a nice whole number. Yes, you can use fractions, but I know many of you hate fractions. So, in this case, maybe what I will just do is let's just employ the idea of cross multiplication. So 3 times x is 3x, 5 times 8, that's 40, 3x equals to 40, and then x equals to 40 over 3. Cool. So why is this important to us? Because when the scale is given, you can use a proportion to determine either the actual size of the object or the model size of the object. So let's look at this. Example number 4, find the actual size of the fish. Notice the scale given to you this time is a ratio, but we can write that as a fraction, 1 over 25. The 1 represents the model, and then the 25 represents the actual, or the real life. Okay? So that 2.8 that we have there, is that the model number or the actual number? Well, this is a picture, right? It's a diagram, so this must represent the model. And because we're actually asking for the actual size, that's our variable or our box. And I'm going to put the x in the bottom. So to solve this, I'm going to ask you once again to cross multiply. So 1 times x equals to 25 times 2.8. What's 25 times 2.8? That, I believe, is 70. So in this case, x, or the actual length, is 70 centimeters. Okay. Alright, why don't you try the next one here. If the blueprint of a house that is 16 meters high is drawn to a scale of 1 to 100. Hmm, scale of 1 to 100. Model on the top, actual on the bottom. What would be the height of the drawing? So height of the drawing means I want the height of the model. And what would the actual number be? That's the 16 meters. But notice I want centimeters as my answer. So let's convert 16 meters into centimeters. What was the conversion again? Oh yeah, 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So 16 meters equals to 1600 centimeters. So let's put that number down on the denominator. And then we can be happy because our answer will be in terms of centimeters. We'll cross multiply again. 1 times 1600 is equal to 100 times x. 1600 is equal to 100x. We'll divide both sides by 100. x is 16. And there you have it. The length of the drawing on the house must be 16 centimeters. Okay. Last one, this lovely fingerprint. It's not my finger, it's someone else's. But what is the actual height of the fingerprint? If the drawing here is 4. I'm not going to say anything. I want you to try this. See if you can get this on your own. Set up the ratios and solve. Try it now, please, on your own. And then I will show you my answer in about, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds.
go. Did you get the same answer as me? If you did, give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs>